A good dog. Item number, SCP-2420. Object class, Neutralize. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-2420 is currently being held in the Low Security Humanoid Containment Wing at Site-213. As of Incident 2420-A, all anomalous activity exhibited by SCP-2420 has been observed to be neutralized. Possible permanent containment, despite cessation of all anomalous activity, is being reviewed by the Ethics Committee. Prior Special Containment Procedures SCP-2420 is to be held in a humanoid containment cell in a specialized containment wing at Site-213. Due to SCP-2420's severe depression, it is to be administered bu bupropri bupropion and citalopram twice daily, with alprazolam administered as needed. Quick aside. Every time I have to say the name of this medication, it trips me up. SCP-2420 is allowed to create an instance of SCP-2420-1 twice a week for three hours at a time. To be lengthened or lessened dependent on cooperation with the current mental state of SCP-2420. Outside of monitored contact with SCP-2420-1, all domesticated dogs, or Canis lupus familiaris, are to be kept outside of SCP-2420's awareness. A pool of domesticated dogs are to be on hand at Foundation Kennels to be used as SCP-2420-1 instances on a rotating basis. Former instances of SCP-2420-1 maintain no anomalous traits and can be adopted by Site-213 personnel or reintegrated into nearby animal shelters. Testing of SCP-2420 has been discontinued. Any recommendations for possible resumed testing are to be brought before Researcher Hydock. Description SCP-2420 was a human, formerly John, blank, who created instances of SCP-2420-1 which took the appearance and memories of the former's pet dog out of domesticated dogs, or Canis lupus familiaris. Footnote. Given the noted similarities in their manifestation of deceased pets, a possible link to SCP-3737 is being investigated. The effects occurred whenever SCP-2420 was made aware of any dog, or any dog was made aware of SCP-2420. Repeated testing showed that only domesticated dogs were affected, with wolves, coyotes, and other canids being immune to the anomalous effects. Dogs of any size would become an instance of SCP-2420-1, and show no pain in their transformation aside from a general confusion found when brought outside of SCP-2420's influence. SCP-2420 showed no anomalous effects beyond its ability to create instances of SCP-2420-1. Testing showed no upward limit on the number of instances of SCP-2420-1 that could exist at a time. SCP-2420-1 instances were completely invulnerable to any form of damage. Attempts at DNA testing were rendered void when it was discovered that nothing could cut SCP-2420-1's fur. Any other tests into the indestructibility of SCP-2420-1 were deemed unnecessary, partly due to the fragile nature of SCP-2420's mental state. While SCP-2420-1 instances showed no need for water or food, the instances would, we would eat whatever was presented to them, 
with various poisons showing no effect. Four more inst instances of SCP-2420-1 that were dissected after being fed showed no sign of having recently ingested any food. Despite SCP-2420-1 instances taking the form of SCP-2420's Border Terrier, photographs and videos of SCP-2420-1 consistently displayed the original body of the dog in question. This resulted in physical discomfort and mental distress regarding certain photos and videos, namely one showing St. Bernard's being able to fit through a small aperture but the images themselves maintained no otherwise anomalous effect. SCP-2420 Initial Interview Log This is the first interview to take place after SCP-2420's admittance into Site-213. Good morning, SCP-2420. I've heard you've had some trouble sleeping. Xanax. Pardon me? Anxious. Helps me sleep. Give me some, I guess. Also, turn up the air conditioning. Absolutely. However, I am not merely here to see to your mental and physical state. As I'm sure you may have guessed, I'd like to hear about your relationship with your best pet before she was deceased. Maddie. Hard. Ma'am, you can call me whatever you want, but she has a name. It's Maddie, short for Matilda. Her full name is Matilda May. Matilda May blank, I guess. Duly noted, but please tell me about Maddie. Well, um, she was my dog, I guess. Got her from um, a neighbor. They're not like a breeder. They had a border terrier meet another border terrier, and they were looking to uh, give away puppies. I guess. That was lonely. My parents died, but I guess you know that. They left me a house, but it's fucked up lonely to be the only one living in some dead people's house, you know? Mm-hmm. Came to their house, their backyard, uh, really. They had all the puppies kind of, you know, all meshed up. I mean, in some, uh, cage. Hey, can we turn a fan on? It's really hot. Like, it's really hot. Hard to breathe. Certainly, SCP-2420, but please calm down. I promise I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to hear your relationship with the, uh, with Maddie. You were just telling me about the day you chose her from the litter. Okay. Okay, I saw her, yeah. She wasn't the biggest, but I, uh, noticed her right away. She was a bit of a bully. She was playing, yeah, but got the sense she didn't have patience for the other dogs. They bothered her. She wanted them to know it. And when I came over, she was the last to come see me. The others, they just jumped up, trying to get me, wanting attention, wanting to be picked up. She just sat down. She stared at me for a good bit. I stared back. It was weird, I guess, but I felt like she was sizing me up. She came over, real confident, kind of pushed aside her brothers and sisters, and I held my hand out to her. She clamped down on my hand. But n not hard. It wasn't mean. She was never mean. Not to me. From then on... Uh, Guess I knew I had to get her. Did she ever exhibit any anomalous abilities? For that matter, before this, have you ever been able to do something that... To be blunt, SCP-2420, felt impossible? If I thought I was magic, I definitely wouldn't have been a telemarketer, living in my parents' house. And Maddie? No, Maddie was definitely not, um, magic. I mean, shit, she was afraid of rainstorms. She thought the vacuum cleaner was a real animal. She was, uh, a smart dog, though. Always well, we seemed to be more person than dog, yeah, but not magic. I always thought 
No, she could learn a bunch of tricks if she wanted, but she clearly had no interest. Mere tricks were beneath her. She carried herself like a little queen, I guess. So nothing strange in her life had ever led you to believe that she could be capable of this kind of anomaly? She was normal. I mean, like I said, she wasn't really a big fan of other dogs, but she'd play with them. It was always like, you know, they were beneath her. But she'd chase them. She was, uh, real territorial. Lenny Kurt, uh, killed a couple, um, birds and stuff. A squirrel once, because he got caught up in a fence. Never thought she'd catch one. Shit, you should have seen her. Blood all over her muzzle, so damn proud of herself. Extraneous data removed. But, uh... I guess you want to hear about how she died, right? That would be helpful. Quite helpful, even. SCP-2420. Even that was, I guess, sadly normal. Just taking her for a walk. She always loved walks. I mean, shit, I guess all dogs love walks. She liked them a lot more. I don't know. Maybe that's crazy. But we were walking uh, near the street and, um, well, uh, can we turn up the air conditioning just a little bit? Certainly. You'd rather not talk about this right now. We could discuss it another time. No, I'm fine, I guess. She, uh, didn't die after all, right? <laughs> The car hit her. Guess I wasn't paying attention. People said I was lucky I didn't get hit, but I'd rather have gotten hit. Maybe I wouldn't have died. Squished her down the middle. It was horrible. The person driving the car was some teen, teen girl. It wasn't her fault. It was Jay walking. She was young. It wasn't her fault. I knew her mother. She lived on the street. But I couldn't stop crying. There she was. Waltzing Matilda May. There she fucking was. She was dead. Bleeding. Everywhere. I took her in my arms. She wasn't breathing. I didn't get to be there for her last breath. I think she died when I was crying, when I was stunned by the, uh, all the, the shit. And what was done with the body? It took her. I walked her. Wasn't that far. Said I was in shock, but I knew what I was, I was doing. Got a shovel from my garage, my dad's shovel. Got her favorite blanket. It was my blanket, really. A uh, big, uh, green one. She always loved it. It was mine, but it may have well been hers. She was more comfortable with it than, well, anyone else could have been, you know? You give a dog a blanket and you swear no human could ever be so cozy. So I wrapped her up. All broken. Uh, she was... So small. Dug a hole in the middle of my backyard. There was a spot where the shade of the trees didn't reach. She lay there. Waltzing Matilda, may I have this dance? That's what I named her after all. You know the song? Buried her. She should, uh, still be there. You guys can check it out. No one moved it. Certainly, SCP-2420. Thank you for your cooperation. If you want to stop now, I would certainly understand. It's been a tough day for you. No, it, it's fine. There's only a little bit more anyway. Can I, uh, can I uh, continue? Absolutely. I was going to kill myself the day I noticed that she was, um... Uh, Everywhere dogs were. Just a normal walk. 
I was going to uh, jump off a bridge. I don't know if I was really gonna, to be honest, ma'am. But it felt like I was gonna. It felt right. But things were weird. I'd never noticed so many border terriers in my life. The neighbors, all of them identical, and they looked just like Maddie. I thought I was losing it. They were trying to get under the gate, trying to climb up it, barking at me, carrying on. I uh, didn't notice anything was weird until I got near the dog park. And that's where we found you, correct? <laughs> yeah, I guess. That's where you all found me. I just... I don't know why I got there. Wasn't even near the bridge. Wasn't even all that close. I think I just wanted to see some. Before I died. They were always so nice. Dogs, but... They were all border terriers. They were all running to me. So many of them. And they all... Well, they all stopped in front of me. Owners were yelling. People were, uh, screaming. They were slipping out of collars that had gotten too big. They were, uh, breaking free from everything. To come to me. They encircled me. They were all her. I knew it immediately. They were all her. One walked up to me. And it bit my hand. Gentle. That's when I fainted. Then, well, I'm here. Excellent. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Is there anything you need before this is concluded? Ah, uh, yeah, just one. Just one thing. Yes? Does it hurt them? Does what she does hurt them? I heard they stop being her when I'm not there. Are they okay? Yes, when they're not instances of SC... I mean, when they cease to be Maddie, there is no peanut pain... There is no pain in the switch. Neither to or from. None of the dogs have exhibited any signs, and anomalous or not, of being affect any in any way affected by Maddie and your effect. And you. You're not going to hurt them? Pardon me? Listen, I've seen E.T. I'm not stupid. You're going to dissect them. Dissect her, maybe. I'm telling you. Please don't. Please don't hurt a dog because of me. Beg of you. I will... I will see what I can do, SCP-2420. Once again, thank you. Will I get to see her again? Visiting times can certainly be arranged, especially for testing purposes. Thank you. I miss her so much. Didn't even get to tell her how good a girl she was. But, you know being magic. Foundation operatives were able to recover the remains of SCP-2420's former pet, where it had claimed them to be. The remains were not anomalous in any way, and had been met with the expected amount of decay. End of interview log. Incident 2420-A during a routine session with SCP-2420 and SCP-2420-1, the, the latter was found to have reverted to its original appearance while in the presence of the former. Continued testing with SCP-2420 and other dogs showed that the SCP-2420 anomaly had most likely been extinguished. Currently, SCP-2420 has been allowed to perform level zero clerical work, while the Ethics Committee will meet to decide what actions to take next. The object has been deemed neutralized. 
Incident 2420-A Interview Log This interview took place immediately after Incident 2420-A. Anything different about Maddie today, SCP-2420? No, it was just like any other day. She came in, jumped around a bit, took her on a little walk, and we were just sitting together. But just normal, lounging. But, I don't know, something felt weird. You noticed it, right? She'd been looking older, even whiter in the jaw. And her snout. God, how long have I been here, Doc? Six years? Actually, ten. Jesus. Well, that's a long time, isn't it? Yeah, so I'd been noticing... She'd been getting older, which was weird since really this hasn't been 10 years for her. It's only been like, what, six hours a week for 10 years? But whatever, maybe it was stressful on her. Maybe time doesn't work like that, I don't know. True. We found that a normal timeline doesn't apply to most anomalous objects under our care. Yeah, see? But she'd been quiet and cuddly. I guess it was almost time for her to go. You know, time's up. She always knew when it was close, time-wise. So she hopped off the couch, and you know, that usually hurts her hips a little bit. She didn't wince or anything. She licked my hand, and then she bit it, looked me in the eyes. That's when I knew this was going to be the last time I saw her. That's when I knew. It had been so hard for her to cling in all those other dogs. I wonder how we did it. It was hard, but she loved me, I guess. And then she was gone. She let go. And she barked at me. Once, impatient. The way she did when she had a toy and I wasn't paying attention. She grinned. Stupid grin. Tongue flopping. And it was like... I don't know. Like a flash. Then suddenly she was that confused golden retriever. Poor baby. I had no fucking clue who I was. <laughs> so I guess you're uh, not gonna keep me around anymore, right? Gonna suck out my memories, drop me back into the real world? That is certainly a possibility. Would you prefer that? Honestly, most people under our care would do anything to escape us. I don't want to go. I don't want to go anywhere where I'll forget her. I'm afraid if I go back out, I'll die without her. I won't remember how much, how she did such strange things to be with me again. That I did such wild shit. I'm afraid of being myself again. The old me. I'm worried I'll walk right back to that bridge. But she won't be at the dog park again. Shit, if you want, I'll clean up the toilets. Fuck, ten years. How am I going to get a job? Ten years. Jesus. I will bring that to the attention of the ethics committee, though I make no promises. But, what I want to ask is, do you feel meaningfully different, SCP-2420? Certainly, our conversations over the years have shown you take a turn. Do you believe it to be the medication, the anomalous effects? Or was it merely being allowed to see your dog again? I don't, I don't know, Doc. Probably the latter? I don't know. I mean, do you want me to say whether or not think my dog somehow cured my depression? That's certainly a question that's been on my mind. Of course she didn't cure me. Just felt nice. That someone loved me enough to do what she did. But she's just a dog. She's not magic. 
End of interview log.